Oh, okay, then. Thanks. Bye. All right, we're in uh, Acts 28. Uh, Amanda, the, the name of it is The Promise. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, in Acts 28. From Acts 9 to 28 is the basic information uh, from the writer of Acts about Paul. Uh, doesn't really start a lot of information until Acts 13. And then from 13 to 28, they call the missionary journeys. And uh, in Acts 28 is like the summation of where he's in house arrest. And I want to read in verse 17, Acts 28, 17. It came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. So obviously, I would say a good letter to start out with in Paul's letters would be the Roman letter, okay? But verse 18, who when they had examined me would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against Caesar, uh, against me, it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I ought to accuse my nation of, for this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you, to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. So from 17 to, to 20, Paul is pleading his case. Now, verse 21, they, the Jews, said unto him, We neither receive letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, and that's what they call the followers of Paul, the sect, we know that in that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodgings. All right now, that's curious. He's held a prisoner, but it's in his lodgings. And it's a curious thing for me. I looked up the word prison, the word strictly the word prison, and it's not in Paul's writings. Prisoner is, but prison is not. So as we read on, understand he's in his house. Look with me, verse 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house. Now let's go back. So when you say prison epistles, am I to believe that it was in his own house. Now, I know this goes against what we've always uh, heard and, and said and whatever, but I was just curious. I looked up the word prison, and it doesn't show it in Paul's writing. It just says prisoner and bound and whatever, and he's held captive in his house. So I'm not disclaiming or claiming. I'm just giving you a chance for you to study it and find out. All right, now watch in verse 23. When they had appointed him a day, they came many, uh, came many to him in his uh, into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from the morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. And after that, after that, Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers saying, go unto this people and say, hearing you shall hear and you shall not understand, seeing you shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their ear, eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Be it known unto, be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. And when they had said this, this, these, uh, these words, now I'll go back to verse 28 one more time. Be it known un, uh, therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and they will hear it. 
Now, they, again, in verse 28, it's, it, it does not say now. Uh, it doesn't say like a reference point of right here. We have some things in Paul's letters that identify certain things. Um, <clears throat> hold here just a minute and go with me to 1 Timothy. See, we can find things in Paul's writings which give definite times or whatever. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. The hereafter, now we know that Timothy uh, is a pastoral letter, and he's saying hereafter, <clears throat> and I want you to go to Acts 22, and look with me in verse... Uh, 19, and I said, Lord, they know that I am prison and beat in every synagogue, them that believed on me. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. So is this there a time? Go to Acts 26. Let's see if there's it's a reference point of time. Acts 26, verse 16. But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things which I will appear to thee. Semicolon. Now, verse 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes, turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith is in me. Okay? Now, <clears throat> go to Acts 13, verse 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, who serve among you, feareth God to use the word of this salvation sent. Verse 38. Here's the word of salvation that's sent. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Okay, go to Romans chapter 3. Uh, apologize. Romans chapter 1. Go with me to Romans chapter 1, verse 15. So as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Okay, now he's not at Rome. The letter is delivered by Phoebe, Acts, uh, Romans 16. He's been led hitherto. He can't go there yet. Now, verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Well, the Greeks are Gentiles. So the word has been going to the Gentiles. And when he writes this letter, he tells the, about the Gentiles. Now look in Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew, Romans 3, 1, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chief because unto them are committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief, Israel, the Jew, make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Okay, now look in verse 29, Romans 3, 29. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. So it's by and through circumcision, uncircumcision. And he's saying he is the God of the Gentiles also. All right. Let's go back to Acts 28, verse 28. Be it known unto you, therefore, uh, unto you, therefore, I apologize. Be it known, therefore, unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and they will hear it. Okay, go to Romans 11. I'm, I'm reading most verses, I'm letting you pick out and think about things. Romans 11 1. I say, then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. 
For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God had not cast away his people which he foreknew. Now Paul's centering in and trying to tell why is he why is he going to a Jew first? If read verse 13, for I speak to you Gentiles, Romans, insomuch as I'm the apostle of the Gentiles and magnify my office. All right, now let's go back to verse three. Uh, to three. Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down on ours. I'm left alone, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God in him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. This is about Elias in verse 2, and he tells him why he sent out, and Elias is not, he's not getting conversion like he thought he would, yet God sent him out for a purpose. He had 7,000 men who had not bowed the image of the veil. They needed the message that he had. Now you go to verse 5. Even so, then at this present time also, there is a remnant, according to the election of the race, a remnant of Jews, that if Paul goes first to, that remnant will hear the message, and it'll be by grace. All right, now watch verse 6. And uh, if by grace, then it's no more of works, otherwise grace is no more of grace. But if it be a works, then it's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. All right, Romans 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is they might be saved. Remember, he's going to a Jew first, also the Greek, Gentiles. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is they might be saved. For I bear them record they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteous God. But before we read on, go back to Romans 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right? Verse 25, uh, 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to, deliver, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and justify him which believeth in Jesus. Romans 10 again, verse 4. For Christ, now this message, he's talking about Israel, about Jews. For Christ is the end of the law for Christ and everyone who believes. So a Jew had to see that the law was done and he would have to believe in the righteousness of God and not his own righteousness. How do I know? Look at Philippians. In Philippians chapter 3. Uh, verse 4. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, all Jews would. If any man thinketh he have where he might trust in the flesh, I am more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew, the Hebrews, touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the right of the law, which is in the law of blameless. The righteousness, which is in the law, remember. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. That knowledge is what the Lord gave him uh, and he appeared to him, and then uh, later appearings, visions, the knowledge, listen, the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Paul had the mind of Christ. He had the understanding of Christ. And then what he preaches, he says, uh, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, winning Christ to the Jews and Gentiles, that he might win Christ's approval, as what he did, and on and on. 
be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, Deuteronomy 6, 24 and 25, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So when the new translation takes the faith of Christ out and put faith in, then they're bringing it back to your righteousness and there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that doeth righteousness. Nothing. So all the perverted translations are denying people the understanding of the righteousness of God without the law. And the faith of Christ is the righteousness, which is of faith, is of God by faith. Okay? Now, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Now, go back to, to Acts 28. Again, verse 28. And all, all my grace life, you know, I always heard it's that this was a time period in Acts 28, 28. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. Go go back to Acts 13. And again, I've heard a lot of things in my life. And I just feel like I check it all the time. I, I should. And I come to revelations a lot of times of things that maybe I took for granted or whatever, but let's read what it says. Acts 13. Uh, look with me in verse uh, 46. Acts 13, 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. Let's go back to verse 40. One, behold, you despisers and wonder and perish. This is Israel, okay? For I work a work in your days, you shall no wise believe, though a man declared it. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogues, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes, Gentiles, followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. And when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Who? The Jews. Now, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It's necessary that the word of God should first been spoken to you, Jews, what advantage hath the Jew, the remnant of the Jews, the elect of Jews, elect of grace, on and on, be to, uh, spoken to, the, uh, to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Right there, he's turned to the Gentiles. Acts 28, he said, let's go back to read Acts 28. Verse 28, be it known unto you, be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. It's come to a point of the end of Paul's ministry where he is a prisoner and it appears he's in his lodging uh, and he dwelt there two whole years. Whether he went into total prison, that's up to God. Uh, you may find it, maybe I missed it, but it doesn't matter to me, but I know one thing, we can read what we said in verse 28, and the word prison is not in Paul's letters. Prisoner is, okay? Well, obviously, he's a prisoner here because he is in his lodging, and he dwelt there in his own hired house to receive, so wherever he went into prison, that's up to the Lord and, and uh, whatever, uh, and again, this is not an argument I'm trying to make, but I'm trying to get you to understand that when Paul is here, he said, be it known unto you, therefore, uh, be, be it known, therefore, unto you that salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles. He's letting them know you have come to a point that you won't listen anymore. And I want you to know, this is what Paul would be saying, I want you to know. The salvation is sin of the Gentiles. Now go back with me and watch. Romans 10, uh, Romans chapter uh, 11, I apologize. Romans 11. You think most churches in religion will never read you Romans 11, 11. 
And the reason is it's a time thing. It's a doctrinal thing. Romans 11, 11, I say then, have they stumbled, they should fall. They as Israel, God forbid, he sent them prophet after prophet after prophet to try to get them to repent. Then finally he sent his own son, and his son gave the parable of it. His own son came, and they denied him too. They denied every one of the prophets, and all the prophets had the writings about Jesus in them. And they denied and killed the prophets. And finally, they killed the son. Why? They thought they'd take over. The spirit that was in them would take over the kingdom. Now watch. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God's not trying to make them fall. He's trying to get them to repent. Why, Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven. He said, if you will repent, I won't sacrifice. You understand, it changed the whole game plan if they would have repented. If all of Israel repented, we probably would never have been born. There would have never been a dispensation of grace or anything else. But God knows before the foundation of the world. Now, wait just a minute. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, According to his chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Before the foundation of the world, God already knew what his chosen people would do. He knows they're going to deny his own son. It's not a mystery that Adam's going to sin. It's not a mystery that God's going to send a flood. It's not a mystery that he's going to choose the people out of Abraham. It's not a mystery he's going to give the law. But none of that's going to affect Ephesians 1, 3, and 4. Why? Uh, to the turn with me to Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Purpose. The purpose, he's going to fulfill a promise. God don't break promises. Where can we find this promise? Let's look. Romans 1. Following Acts 28, Paul's letter of Romans put right there in the canon of Scripture. God wanted it right there. All right, verse 1, chapter 1, 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God. Now, how did Paul get separated from the gospel uh, uh, under the gospel of God? Hold here, go to Acts chapter nine. Right in Acts chapter nine, verse one, and yet Saul uh, and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and desired to him letters to Damascus uh, to the synagogues that if he found any of that this way. They believed that Jesus was the Son of God. Whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. <clears throat> and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he, the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest, hard for thee to kick against the bricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now, I want to compare this with Acts 22. In Acts 22, <clears throat> verse uh, 10, And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise. Now, uh, Look in, uh, well, you don't have to. Verse 10, the Lord said, what shall I do, Lord? Uh, Paul said, I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, arise, go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. All right, verse 14. Uh, no, 12. One Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came to me and stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. 
And he said, the God of our fathers has chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will, to see that just one, hearest, shouldest hear the voice of his mouth, for thou shalt be a wit his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. Now why tarriest thou arise and be baptized, wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord? Baptism is a separation. Paul was separated under the gospel of God, which he had denied from Acts 7, 8, and 9, or 8 and 9. He denied that Jesus is the resurrected Son of God. The gospel of God, the good news is, you killed him, God raised him. Now Paul is a believer of that, and he separated him. If you don't think so, come back to Acts 2. In Acts chapter 2, verse 36, now therefore, I apologize, therefore let all the house of Israel know sure that God had made that same Jesus and you have crucified both Lord and Christ. Obviously, Saul, our apostle Paul, was in that group, okay? Now when they heard this, they were pricking their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Paul is not in that group. He's in the group that resists the truth he blasphemes against the truth, not the Holy Ghost. He don't have it. Now, when they heard this, their freaking heart said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what should we do? And Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is to you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Okay, go with me to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 15. But when it pleased God, okay, let's go back to 14. And, it, and profited in the Jews' religion. The Jews' religion hated Jesus Christ. They crucified him. They said, we have no king but Caesar. Let his blood be on us and our children. And so when they did that, Saul is part of them. Saul being our apostle. I'm going to use Paul, but you know it's Saul. Paul was part of them. And he kicked against Jesus in his earthly ministry. He kicked against him in the crucifixion. He kicked against him with uh, Peter's preaching. He kicked against him with Stephen's preaching, but he couldn't kick against the Lord in the actual appearing, the blinding, and being spoken to by the Lord. When the Lord uh, appeared to him, he told him to go into Jerusalem. It would be told him all things he must do. And Ananias tells him to get baptized. Why? Two things. He'll separate himself from the untoward generation, which is called the Jewish religion. And he'll get the Holy Ghost. Now watch, verse 15, Galatians 1, 15. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, that is his religion. That's his alma mater. That's his mother. It's Jerusalem, not above the Jerusalem below, who had denied the Lord and killed him, okay? He separated him from his mother's womb and called him, called me by his grace, okay? Now, Paul then is separated under the gospel of God. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. So the baptism, the water baptism separates him Now, verse 12, 1 Corinthians 2, 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. I think there's something important I want to show you. I'll hold that, go to Romans 8. Just come to me. Romans 8, verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot believe God. Paul in his flesh would have been in his mother's womb, Jerusalem, it would be the Jews' religion, the Jews' tradition. Verse 9, but you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be the Spirit of God dwell in you. The Spirit of God came in Paul by the baptism, the gift. 
the Spirit of God showed him what to receive to get the Spirit of Christ, which is, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 20, for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establisheth with you in Christ, that establishes Romans 16, is my gospel. Now understand this. I, I, remember, you're going to have to turn to Romans 16. Look at me in Romans 16, 25. 